You are watching the Fayetteville Government Channel. Up next, full coverage of the latest meeting of the Fayetteville Council of Neighborhoods. The Council of Neighborhoods is composed of citizen volunteers and meets on the last Thursday of each month. The Council of Neighborhoods provides a forum for neighborhood associations to share information, concerns, and ideas, and provides a mechanism to communicate with elected officials and governmental agencies. And now, the Fayetteville Council of Neighborhoods. Good evening. Welcome to the March 28th, 2013 Federal Council of Neighborhoods meeting. Um, call to order. I'm not sure how to call everyone to order. Let there be order. And, uh, we'd like for folks to go around and uh, introduce yourself, uh, name and affiliation. Uh, Craig, you want to start? Okay, Richard. Uh, my name is Craig Crocker. I live in Jennings Plus. Richard asked me to come to this meeting so we could have a quorum. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, uh, to think about, previous to the meeting, to think about ideas of increasing attendance. And I have one idea. I can tell you now or I can tell you later. Well, why don't you go ahead? All right, sure. it's quick. Gen just generally speaking, in broad strokes, like I've been you know, to these meetings off and on. And the attendance is never great unless, like you said, you know, there's a fight going on. But um, my opinion is, you know, I just like ask myself, why do I not go to more of these meetings? Because uh, they're too long and they don't move briskly enough, and they're here, and uh, all those reasons. And I thought, okay, well, if you can't get people to come to the meeting, take the meeting to the people. And so I thought, okay, why don't we just have the meeting at the farmer's market on Saturday? Pick a Saturday, like this last Saturday of the month or something like that. Interesting idea. And um, there'll be people from all over the city milling about, and at least some of those you'll be able to grab and pull in. And, um, or, you know, just as a general concept, take the meeting to the people. It just seems like that the farmer's market is probably the most well-attended city function for that to happen. And I would, I would be more, more likely to go there and in a better mood and have more free time on a Saturday morning. <laughs> okay. May I, may I address that? Uh, that? That is one thing that uh, has been done with the uh, public access TV short takes. And several times in the past few years, they've been recorded out there at, during the farmer's market. Uh, the, uh, and that's done by volunteers. You're talking about the, this function the here? The camera function. Okay, so the problem is is that we can't get you to come out to the farmer's market on a Saturday? They, they don't have the budget. The okay, well, clarification, he said public access, this is the government channel. Yeah. Okay. This is, that's the difference. Oh, I see. But it's, it works. It, it works quite well because you get a bunch of people and they can speak their five minutes. Yeah. Uh, which they can also do in this meeting. Right. But, but that, fewer people. that's a way to catch them out on the street. You're, right. You're very right, Craig. I, I like that idea. Okay. I wish we could do it. Oh, we can't do it I, because of... No, I mean, I wish we could do it as um, with government channel, but public access can run it and do it, but it takes a volunteer to bring the camera and set up and shoot normally. There's no staff. Do we shoot. bump into some kind of bureaucracy just to go without? Without the TV? Yep. Um, no, you can, we can do that, but it's, no, unlike what you said about do anybody to watch it, these are, these now are shown in uh, the There's government channels uh, in all four, let's see, all four Northwest cities, Fort Smith, and, uh, well, I mean, <coughs> excuse me, and plus they're on YouTube, and uh, I, I put most of the, interesting city meetings on YouTube on my own channel. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can put them on Facebook. All you got to do is put the link in there uh -huh. and they show there on your Facebook account. So there are many ways to uh, share what goes on at the meetings. And so I think filming them is an essential thing. Okay. There's a lot of technical aspects to it that you're kind of glossing over as far as doing it on a remote location, yeah, especially if it is outdoors. You have a lot of sound issues. Mm, okay. So it has to be, it ideally it has to be in a room, one which we can set up an external light and so forth. But that's why we do them here because everything's set up. 
something that occurred to me was, of course, consistently the meetings, I think, are going to need to be maintained in an environment or context such as this, so, so everybody knows where it is, when it is, and that they won't get rained on or cold. But uh, at the same time, we have had uh, some meetings off-site, the, the, uh, or at least uh, had activities off-site mm -hmm. related to FCON. And uh, I like the idea of doing it at the market at least, you know, a few times, uh, even if it's not filmed, because we can announce to people beforehand that the next month's meeting is not going to be held here and it won't be televised. It's going to be held live on the square, and any interested parties are welcome to come to that meeting. Mm -hmm. So the people that do have the habit of watching will have that option of, of getting their feet wet, so to speak. And it might actually pull in, it might serve to pull in some more interested parties. I mean, if the people are watching it on TV, then obviously they're interested. Well, we started introductions, and uh, thankfully Craig got to say his piece but, and not have to wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In fact, he could leave if he so inclined. No, he can't. He cannot Long leave. Drunk. Well, I would, except for I want to hear what Frank Sharp has to say. <coughs> yeah, but he's here for well, I'm Richard Russell, and I'm the chair of this meeting, and um, I'm from Jennings Plus neighborhood as well. And that was Stan Lancaster, and your neighborhood is? Jefferson Walker. Jefferson Walker, and this is? Aubrey Shepherd, and it's Town Branch Neighborhood Association. Mm -hmm. Dee Dee Peters, uh, city staff, and I am in the Washington Willow neighborhood. And really, I think we're called to order and pretty well identified, but we haven't lured Brother Frank Sharp up to where we can see his face for his presentation. And, uh, and I'm ready to go when, it, you know, I don't is know. What, do you, what pictures did you Is it use? shining right on my face? Should you, I move yes. over? <laughs> you, it, I've been you seeing that map. some kind of light yes. up in the that sky. That would be the most helpful thing to start. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, if you... I will. Get in the corner or stand up, however you like it, Frank. This is going to be interesting. Okay. I think everybody except possibly Craig has been up on the mountain. Isn't that right? I mean, I know these four have. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have five minutes, you said, Aubrey? No, sir. Oh, okay. yeah, I heard you. I, I was talking about a, a short take oh, you okay. can do at the this will be short. public access okay. chamber. But we're not interested in necessarily short. <laughs> we want, we want okay. To know about this. In 2004, uh, a group of investors bought well, what turned out to be 900 acres on Mount Kessler, which is west of Fayetteville, and uh, it's bounded. You can see Cato Springs. I have that other one. Do you want that other? That, that, that the little small yeah, one. Yeah, let better. me see here. Sorry, I'm not. It's not that one. Is it this this one? Is it on there? No, I know it's around here somewhere. Hmm. We may have to use this one. Oh, there we go. That, that's a good clear one. Okay, this area in color is 900 acres, and uh, it was to have 4,000 housing units on it plus commercial. And it's bounded by Cato Springs Road. And then uh, way over here is Martin Luther King. And uh, it was called South Pass. And it unfortunately, when the real estate uh, just crashed, it went south. So it's now owned by Chambers Bank. And uh, the South Pass developers pledged to do donate to the city 200 acres for a regional park and uh, plus a million dollars to go into infra infrastructure. And when Chambers took it over, they pledged the, uh, the 200 acres to the city of Fayetteville, and that is all this darker green. And uh, so the city has a deed to that, and I understand they're planning to do start some construction in 2014. They've got about $4 million set aside, which won't do the whole park. I think I've heard about $22 million for the whole park. I'm not sure, but I know it's but, more than four. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. The red, the University of Arkansas has outgrown their intramural fields, and they're looking at four various locations 
to move them, including the hyper building. So it's, it'll be a big deal. And uh, the four locations are the Marinoni property, some land uh, north of uh, Sam's Wholesale, I call it the wetlands, and uh, some places south near the, the ball fields, a very small area, and then this, and they're looking at 100 or so acres right here, the red. The yellow is sort of unallocated land, I guess, to be developed. And the re reason it looks like the Balkans is because uh, these, this was to tie in with the original development. My guess is it's going to look a lot different in a few years. They'll be trading land around to get it more peace. Okay, the part I'm really interested in is bounded by these bluffs. And it's just rough as can be. And uh, it is contiguous to the park, you know, right well, all the way on this side. And uh, over the years, South Pass, plus some of the neighbors, have been kind enough to let the Ozark off-road cyclists build eight and a half miles of uh, hiking, biking trails on the mountain. And uh, they were having trouble. They were coming in off Finger Road, and there's not parking, and it's, it's created some problems congestion and what have you. And we had a neighborhood meeting of our Mount Kessler Greenways and that was a problem that came up. And I said, well, you know, uh, I've got a big parking lot at the Smokehouse on Martin Luther King and uh, it's paved road up to the top of the mountain owned by the city, the city street. And uh, I had a trail that went through what's called Rock City. You'll see some pictures of it. And that was the end of my property. And so those are off-road cyclists then build a connecting trail from my trail to their trail system. Now ultimately, uh, all the, right now people come in from the west uh, through about four different private property owners. And uh, we ask people to sign a waiver of liability in case somebody's dog bites them and uh, get bit by a copperhead, fall off the bluff. But ultimately, the trails, there will be parking, and restrooms in this on this regional park. And then there'll be sort of intermediate trails. These are awfully rough trails. Kids and stuff, I mean, be pretty tough kids bike them. But uh, anyway, there'll be intermediate trails and then tie. So access ultimately will be from the east on Cato Springs Road. And it'll be parking restrooms, you know, really uh, much better situation. But until then, uh, until then, the late neighbors will continue to allow people to uh, access from the west. Dee, did you have that picture of the sort of the report cover? Yes. Before, mm -hmm. before we get off this, there's this right here is, was the old Trent Trail, and it followed the crest of the mountain. It divides. Uh, it's the watershed on the east, goes into the White River, to the west of the Illinois River. And what we're stressing is four uh, uses, major uses for this property. An outdoor classroom. We've had many university groups, university professors that uh, point out that peer institutions uh, have these uh, outdoor classrooms adjacent. And this is 10 minutes from campus. It's perfect. And it's actually more than the 387 acres because I have 100 they can use and Jamie Steele has 80 they can use. So we have the Johnson to the south end had like 400. So there's a great big undeveloped area there. And we had uh, a group of high, playable high school kids out there for a field trip uh, last week. And then we're having science teachers come in uh, two weeks from now. And we've uh, from the university. So it's, and it, uh, I'm also meeting with the woman who's in charge of all the elementary schools because you know the nature, the Ozark Natural uh, Science Center in Madison County is closing out here unless they get some money. And of course, it's a long way off to take kids, it's expensive. So this would be a very short trip for kids, I mean, kindergarten on up. And so it would be a huge natural classroom. Okay, outdoor recreation would, of course, be the hiking, biking, and running. And we, uh, I'll get into a trail log, but last month I started a trail log, and I asked their names and, and dates, 
and then uh, I asked for their zip code so I can see how many people are coming from out of town, how many are Fayetteville and how many are coming out of town. Then I also asked them if they have any university affiliation, student, faculty, ex-student, and, uh, and then to the initial whether they're a hiker, biker, or runner, or others, others are like classes. And uh, right now we've done a little over a month and the weather's been pretty bad. And uh, we have about 25% are coming from out of Fayetteville, which I want to point out to Maryland because we haven't got a promotion board. And about a third of them have a university connection, which is surprising to me. So uh, if we go to the university for some money, we can say, look, a third of our users are university people. And then we have the, uh, the watershed the protection of watershed. I mean, it, they'll be kept. This will be kept natural, just the way it is right now. Blue. All the all the facility will be down, you know, in the, the park. And then just flat preservation of almost 400 acres right in the middle. Of, they're all in the failed city limits. So that is. Uh, those are the four major uses for uh, for we are calling Mount Kessler Reserve. So I have photographs um, open and. Um, we can go to the tree ring, or we can go to yeah, some sure of the tree ring. I'll, okay. uh, uh, I don't know how many of you have been up to the top of Kessler, and there's a real slaty area uh, that has some almost bonsai type, type post oaks, really contorted, small. And what natives have told me those are hundreds of years old. So I talked to Doug James at the university and uh, asked him about those trees. And he said, don't talk to me, talk to Dave Staley. And I said, you don't know Dave Staley? He's the uh, distinguished professor of, of you know, he has a tree ring laboratory. And uh, so Dave and uh, Joe Neal and some people at Parks and Recreation, we hiked up to look at those trees. And he gave them a glance. He looked at some, he found some ancient Chinkapan oak trees down on a little bench that were so inaccessible that they had not been cut. He said, those things are probably two to three hundred years old. And he said, uh, I've got a graduate student who wants a thesis, a master's thesis, and this would be great to inventory Kessler and look at these these trees and check to see how old they are, plus all the, look at the other, other trees. But he said it would cost $3,800 to do that. And uh, so I met with Bob Koch, who's president of Fayetteville National Heritage, and in two days he raised that $3,800 to fund the, the student. And he'll be uh, he'll be working this summer and present his report uh, in in the fall. So, excuse me, one question: Chinkapin Oak is not the same as a Chinkapin. No, not the Chinkapin. Yeah. It's, in fact, it's spelled differently. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to argue with Dr. Right. Staley the way he spells it. In fact, the spell check changed it, and I had to change it back. You know? Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. So there's some of the Chinkapin Oaks. If you just roll them, I sort of. This is the just about the report. Yeah, this and then tells the whole thing. I'm doing this. Let me go into what this report is going to be. Uh, I'm getting letters of support, and I'll probably have 50 maybe letters from people. Things like Fayetteville National Heritage, of course, which have pledged that's their major uh, goal this year, and uh, the Nature Conservancy. I got a letter yesterday from the International Mountain Biking Association. It's a worldwide group out in Boulder, Colorado, and they said these are world-class trails and save them. So I'm doing this report from various groups, university groups, school groups. Uh, I've got the city, you know, the uh, your group, was the Environmental Action Committee. Environmental Action Committee. And the Urban Forestry Committee. And, uh, Sierra Club. The trails, uh, uh, Sierra Club. And uh, anyway, we're getting all these layers of support to raise the money because it's going to take probably between two and three million dollars to buy that. And this is what's called Rock City right here, is rock formation. Uh, uh, Joe Neal took some really interesting pictures of this uh, geology, these rocks, plus the fossils and stuff that I don't think I sent. But these, this is a daughter, I have, her daughter hiking that. I have uh, images from Mike Price. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, he comes up and uh, so. photographs wildflowers. I got a letter, I mean, a uh, waiver from what I built today from a woman doing wildflowers. And his 
think the Kessler pictures are way down. Oh, here's a. Uh, I sort of cut a hole in the fence to get people into the trail, and it was sort of hard to describe. You'd say, okay, go past the second rock house on your left, go a little farther around a curve on your right, you look down, you see a gate. So we're making a nice entrance right here the, to the Rock City Trail. And this is our Mount Kessler Greenways, and we do ask people to uh, email us and uh, we'll send them a waiver. And this is our trail log right here. Here's a little sign going to Rock City. This is uh, showing the Ozark Off-Road Cyclists who have built builders of sustainable trails. And this is our Mount Kessler Greenways logo. And I can just go down. Oh, yeah, that's cute. <coughs> <clears throat> so, and then there's, he's got... What do you call that spot where the bluff? This one? Right in there. Do you have a name for that one? That's just part of Rock City. Oh, okay. Yeah. Actually, that may be the one that has all the spider ward on it in the spring. There's one wow. rock that sort of sticks up by itself and it's just solid spider ward. Really? Mm -hmm. okay, the trout lilies will be coming out. It should be coming out soon if it warms up. Coming well. out south of... Let the trillion. Here. See, there's the, there's the fossils right here. And this would be great for field trips for kids. What is that? That's a fo I think that's a fossil, oh, right? Oh, yeah, okay, sure. Um, petrified turtle. Pet petrified turtle. Uh, let's see. This has been very helpful. They did these <coughs> pictures. Is that oh, petrified wood up there? No, I see. Okay, it's just a stump. Now here's here's one of the tree rings. It was a uh, this was from the ice storm of 2009. One of these big chink fan oaks fell across the Whoops, the path, right. and I took a chainsaw and cut it. And Dr. Staley took a section of it for his tree ring analysis. Yeah. That's when Fritzies are already out. Okay, and then I've got um, some. Uh, oh, that, yeah, Eric, um, that's sort of interesting, that sort of dark, the sunset one. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's okay, now, there are three mountains out there. Actually, there are several, but the three, there's Washington Mountain, which is right behind Walmart, Finger Road, and, uh, and then Kessler is the next mountain, and then the next mountain south is Miller Mountain. Okay, Stan Johnson and their family have two, three hundred acres up on top of Washington Mountain, and they have all these trails, and they are contiguous to the South Pass trails. And Eric Yates is our neighbor on Miller Mountain, and he took this picture of, of Mount Kessler at sunset. And actually, I met with him this morning. We're trying to look at how we can connect the three mountains with trails so that you could have like a trail run from all the way from Washington Mountain trails for three and a half miles, eight mile, miles of Kessler, and I don't know how many miles on Miller. But anyway, Eric owns quite a bit of property, a couple hundred acres, I think, on Miller Mountain. Um, let's see, uh, Aubrey sent me a link of his images. There's a lot. I don't know where we want to start. Just pick a place, I guess. There's some kids. Oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is the uh, Environmental Action, Action Committee. Committee. Yeah. So. The only time Aubrey's been on the other side of the camera. Let's see some of more of Rock City. Well, anyway, we welcome all y'all to come and hike oh. and see it. It's a little blurry. Any questions? Anyone want to see the map again or anything? Or? On the map, all those colored areas are proposed, right? Except the green that is actually owned by the city. So is that Finger Park? No, 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 no. That's no, it. they have 200 acres. This is all of the nine, the whole thing is 900. Right. Chambers owned all nine. Now they own seven because they gave, actually, I think it was 235. Mm -hmm. Because they have this 200 acres and have this. The city has a deed to this. So where is um, MLK or six? Way over here. Okay. Would be, uh, north. Okay. 
one thing we're also looking at long, long, long term is uh, I think also in 2014 they're supposed to extend Ruppel Road uh, and, and intersect Martin Luther King. It'd be right at Smokehouse Trail. And so the kids would be able to go ultimately all the way from Boys and Girls Club, Owl Creek School, up Smokehouse Trail to the top of Kessler, and there'd be a short little park through private property that would then tie into the city park. So that's probably long, long, long term. This would, that's, that'd be a multi-purpose trail, but all the rest are natu nature trails, and we hope to keep them that way. At the bottom, there you, you see, see Oh, there it is. Yeah. 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 Okay, here's, here's Martin Luther King. Here is the smokehouse itself. Mm -hmm. Yes, right here. And then uh, it comes right like this. Uh, and I guess my house would be right in here. Come on around. And, uh, and this is the trail. You can see here, here is part of what we call the Trent Trail that the city already owns. So that and the Smokehouse Trail is paved all the way to here. So this is how much we need ultimately to make a multi-purpose trail that would go all the way. Ripple Road comes from the mall, you know, Van Ash and all that. And so I think it, like I say, this is different somebody else's property, but when they, that is developed someday, I think it's critical to be sure to keep that trail corridor in there. Do you know if this one's actively used, the green one here right there? This, you said well, this yeah, it's for the bikers. I forgot to say in that trail, we've had probably close to 400 people this past month, and the weather's been lousy. So, gosh. Didi's been there how many times? About three? I've been there several. Yeah. That's so nice. Did you count your dogs on the trail log? I did. I did. I said plus two dogs. <laughs> City limits pretty far away from here. Where are they? Wrong. There, there are 900 acres in the city limits here, and my hundred is all in the city limits. So there's a, th uh, a thousand acres in the city within the city limits of Fayetteville. Mm -hmm. Does it cons city limits of Fayetteville beyond there to the west? Okay, uh, I think that's probably it, <coughs> because uh, Washington. Well, I don't know. Part of Washington Mountain would be in the city limits, but uh, the part of and the, the Cato Springs, I don't know how far the city limits come. <coughs> Greenland, maybe. I don't know. Uh, it, it ends not very far off the map here. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, that's what's amazing is there's a thousand acres of woods right in the middle in the city limits of Fayetteville. And no matter what uh, Lake Fayetteville is, it would probably be almost as large as Lake, Lake Fayetteville. Let, let me, uh, at the bottom of the set, if I might. It, there's some pictures of the lower part. Okay. Uh, oh, of where the park will be? Well, yeah, where you enter the park from Cato. the road down here. I noticed they were talking about paving. That's, that's coming through. Sorry. You want me to go back? I no, can no, go no, back. No, I just noticed they were going to, it was on their street plans. I read the paper. They were going to pave that just coming through. That would lead to the. Yeah, here are the signs that the city has of future. Right. If you blow up that, you can see the future plans for it. Mm -hmm. And that's rolling land. It's not uh, very steep, but it is. It's all beautiful habitat right now. My question when I made this picture: Well, where did they? They mentioned all these other wonderful things, but they don't mention a nature area. And Frank has proposed one. Well, actually, what I'm pushing for instead of a 200-acre park, I want a 600-acre park. And I want to instead of just having all baseball and softball and soccer. Want to have mountain biking and trail running, nature study. Okay. Do um, we want to look at your video, Aubrey? Uh, what what I gave you a few minutes ago? Yes. No, that's a separate. Oh, it's separate. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I will. Uh... Well, thank you all indeed. Thank you particularly for putting all this together. Well, let's, Mr. Chairman, see what questions anybody has. Keep Frank talking here a minute. Oh, I've he, got a sick goat. I need to go back. <laughs> sick goat. Okay. Aubrey, do I need to add something to the agenda while I'm over here? You do need to. Uh, Good to see you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank well, the only thing I brought in yeah, is yeah. the. Uh, yeah. This is just part of the. The. I'm, you know, I'm neighborhood I'm updates. I have a little uh, I slideshow that. for that. Comes out. Does it? Real short. You're the whole audience tonight. Yeah. We always have those. Oh <clears throat> sure. We have a mystery guest who's speaking to Frank right now, Julie McQuaid. Yeah. <laughs> she, 
She looks nice. She does, really. Representing she Wilson Park right. uh, oh. See if you can get something from her. Or she might maybe make a report on her neighborhood. We've got a website. I think. Um, I think one thing I wanted to discuss, thank you so much thank for you, taking the time for that, is to... Hey, we're going to make her sit at the table with you, don't we? Chili, would you like to join us at the table? I knew you guys were going to do I'm going to come sit by Judy because okay. I just feel out of place That's else. That's the place you like to sit. <laughs> That's where you sat for many meetings. I was not intending to come here, so I'm not going to face the camera. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was cleaning the yard all day, so... Great day you, you will give us input if we... Make Absolutely. Distinctly questions. <clears throat> What's your neighborhood? That's a question. Mr. Wilson Park. Yeah, we already mentioned that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I found that out. Uh, one of the issues that I have on my mind and have had for some time is viewership, uh, participation, conversation, this conversation. When Julie was our contact person, I talked to her about it some, you might recall. I've always wanted to know who is the forum? Where, where is this conversation taking place besides this room? <clears throat> and I, I still really don't know. And it almost seems to me like sometimes that the conversation is taking place somewhere and I'm not a part of it. Neighborhoods have list serves, have different ways of communicating. <clears throat> and uh, somehow I'm not in that conversation. Um, I'm not a early adapter or a leading edge technologist, but uh, you know I am interested. So I'm curious. Maybe Julie, have you got any any thoughts about that from your experience and people you've known, what they do in their neighborhoods, how they talk to each other? Um, I think that there are some neighborhoods that have listservs. Um, I know that our neighborhood has one that a few people still use. It's not active like it used to be. Um, but even in my neighborhood in Wilson Park, which is a very active and usually pretty well-informed neighborhood, um, there's some communication um, what is their, missing. What is their preferred method? I mean, the, the communication that takes place, is it person to person? Or? I think there's a lot of, I mean, there are a lot of people, and I know in our neighborhood there are a lot of people that work at the university that usually prefer um, more of an online technology, either through email, listserv, something like that. But then there are probably a good percentage of our um, neighborhood members that don't <coughs> use that. So there is no one type of communication, I think, to reach everybody. Yeah, and we started this conversation last week, last month, and... Uh, I think Dee Dee was going to uh, do some thinking about that and maybe <clears throat> find us some fresh ideas about what folks do. Someone at our meeting said, well, they just have a lawyer that they all text or email, and if they've got an issue they're being dealt with legally, that person has a strong interest in it being in there in the neighborhood, and they just go do it. Some neighborhoods do. I think so. Yeah, especially if they're a property owners association or homeowners association they um, go through their lawyer I know in my neighborhood we have a police officer so if there's an issue that we need to know about he'll send out um, a message on the listserv so um, that's I feel like that's a good plus for my neighborhood Absolutely. And I don't know if any you know having a police officer in your neighborhood is pretty great well, it's a, certainly a, a direct action uh, channel, mm -hmm. way to, to get there. So um, I'm still, I'm, I sure like it when people come and make presentations and uh, it sure is smooth whenever you've got the slideshow and everything all organized nice and you can look at the, the total picture there of all the, the thumbnails and decide which ones we want to look over. And Aubrey's going to show us something also. Uh, are we ready for that? What else? Well, I mean, you're likely tired of watching me talk, but um, well, you got any I, points I of order? Well, not at the moment. I, I just get out of talking about I brought the, sample 
pictures and actually uh, different, three different neighborhoods, just a couple, two, three pictures of each. So these are kind of neighborhood updates in the uh, Yeah, in, uh, just on in living photos, color. So. Yeah, good. That's good over. I knew she was doing that work and have the equipment working, so I, I brought that. Okay, let's see. This is my first time using this computer in here, so. You're doing great. I mean, to me, you can't beat this for content or okay. how it presents. Let me just start at the beginning. Yeah, let's let's just start there. This is a, a new portion of trail. It'll connect with Briscoe Trail. Uh, this is looking east through the Hill Place Apartments, which are at Hill Avenue between MLK and 11th Street, and north of my house. And this old railroad line went through that area and connected downtown. It, it crossed Frisco and went downtown and joined at, along about Dixon Street where the two came together. And uh, somebody at the senior center today was pointing out that, uh, were you there at that conversation, maybe Richard? Well, the uh, man was pointing out that years ago the strawberry and grapes and so forth grown out in the Lincoln area had justified the creation of that addition to, to the Frisco Railroad and it sounded like it only lasted a decade or so that it was in use. And I remember when the track was still through here and after they, they filled in the tunnel some years ago where the track went through and they uh, let the, the uh, trestle deteriorate. So right now the, the contractors are restoring that uh, trestle and uh, you will be able to jog or, or ride your bicycle or walk through there and go from, uh, well, you can go from over at MLK, wherever you get off the end of Frisco will come across in the near future and um, go all the way to Razorback Road and so forth behind us here. We're looking out of that, out of that old tunnel. You can see the tunnel looks like it might need a little shoring up. It's, mm -hmm. it's really old. And uh, it certainly uh, is, a, is a great addition to, to utilize the old tunnel and the old trestle. And you can see the town branch of West Fork and the White River flows to your right here. Go ahead and move forward. I didn't mean to talk that long. But you can see they're really having to do some serious work Got a machine down there. The water's muddy right now in front of my house where this thing, 100 yards less than that, in front of my house. The stream runs down that way in front of my house. And that work right there is put mud in it, inevitably. And, and some work on top of Rocher Heights that's going on in building apartments. And there's several sources of siltation on these streams. And, and you never know, sometimes you see it crossing and you don't know where it is, and I always go trace it, try to find which place is it today that's, that's adding that, uh, turning the water yellow. But uh, now this is on a different parcel of land. This would be actually in Stan's neighborhood, uh, the Partners for Better Housing, south of Jennings Plus, have seven acres of land that was never plowed, apparently, because it's half of it's wetland and half of it uh, maybe more than that, but it's got a, a stream flows through it from, comes out from underground at 7th Street at, uh, uh, that's Willow, it's the end of Willow Avenue, and goes, flows through there, spreads out there, it looks like somewhere you go duck hunting in East Arkansas. But anyway, the partners have not completed the fundraising and all the planning for that development in there. But the, they have promised some uh, low impact development uh, methods in there to try to minimize the, uh, the damage. But I think Richard saw this the other day and, and I said, yes, that's what they do. They do, when they go through and mark the trees and, and do a survey, these guys that did this one 
put a metal thing nailed into the, the tree itself, kind of made a cut in there. I'm not sure that's necessary, but uh, it leaves a permanent mark for the, when the plan uh, is being studied, you can see right where those trees are on that plan. And so it's other places I, I've seen they did not do this, but uh, this particular surveyor went to that much trouble. Some of those are up high. That's why I was holding my camera up to get up to where you could actually see the number. But there are hundreds of trees in that property that are marked that way. And we'll go ahead and, and see what else. Well, that's 7th Street at Willow, you see. That's where the water comes underground. It's looking north from the partners. It's about 150 yards, but zoom up and get a picture of that side from down at the edge of the partner's land to show where the water comes in. And there's a sample of what the stream looks like. And it, of course, gets out of its banks and spreads when we have heavy rain up, uh, up where Willow Heights is, that, that area. And uh, it's pretty powerful. That little hole in the ground, uh, a lot of people in Fayetteville will know exactly what that is because if they live in the plant land, they see the when it rains, the burrowing crawfish come out. They have two burrows near one another that meet six feet apart or something when they come to the surface quite often. And, uh, and some nights you'll find a mama crawdad with babies on her stomach. She's come up to get them out of the water so they can breathe until the water settles down enough, goes back, soaks in, and they can uh, go back down there. Are those so, non-native species that are up here from Louisiana? No, these are, these are Ozark or Osage burrowing crawfish. They're, they're a distinct uh, group of species, and uh, Mr. Joe Neal talked about that was a great deal when he was touting Wilson Spring for protection about a decade, a little more than a decade ago. And, and, they're a strong indicator of high quality wetland. Good. They're also tasty. Well, yeah, they're just small. They're just small, but they, they'd be tasty. Now, this is where the water flows out. It, it, some of the water, the surface water comes in out of pipes up at the upper end there where I showed the sign of, of uh, Seventh and Willow. And here's where it comes out at Wood Avenue. And you'll see the land is about the same level, a little lower than the street, land on the other side of the street, it's flowing on down through there and down to under 15th Street, a little ways past that next uh, wooded area. And this is uh, open land there is belongs to the uh, housing board, federal housing board authority, and uh, it potentially may be developed. So the part, that's why it's essential the partner's land be low impact development because neighbors can be flooded, things won't on down. And the o, EOA building, which is right here, the, the children's preschool facility will that's be in the next slide maybe here if you want to move on. You see, that's kind of an awkward <laughs> sidewalk with the pipe there and so forth. Anyway, the water comes down from the partner's land straight back in the left-hand top corner here. And it has repeatedly flooded that building over the years. I've actually been there and watched the cleanup crew in the evening mopping it out a couple of times over the years. I've learned that that would be a place you could see some damaging flooding at times in the middle. And so this land's all the same level. Partner's land is past the building that direction uh, to the northwest and uh, it's, it's an important uh, groundwater recharge area in our city where it soaks in if it's left alone and not registered. So go ahead. Uh, this is at uh, Fifth Street and uh, Spout Spring Branch. And Spout Spring Branch is running to your right here. And just across the little walking bridge the street ends right there, and the walking bridge takes you over to South College Avenue between, well, at what would be Fifth Street if it were extended from here. 
the reason I focused on this, just before the uh, Streamside Ordinance went into effect, the owner of this land that we're going to see to the left in, in another slide came and removed all the vegetation. He had lots of native vegetation, a good bit of non-native, and now he sold it and that buyer had sold it again, but they, they got it cleared so they wouldn't be subject to the Streamside Ordinance by April, April the 1st on the, in the 2010. So this shows the work they're trying to do. You can see the barrier on the right. That's, <coughs> that's uh, the actual drop-off area where they've got that stuff up there to catch the silt. And the house they proposed building on this tiny lot would be right up in the left-hand corner, as far as the highest ground you've got there. <coughs> but this is, you know, it, it is something that can be exempted because it was grandfathered in. But they too are responsible for first protecting their building that they're going to put that close. And second, uh, theoretically, they should not send any more stormwater downstream any faster. And that, uh, this is a, you know, an indication of a real tiny exemption or, or exception being made to that, that regulation. And it's a single family home and those are not regulated closely as <coughs> multi-family and so forth. That's, uh, if you haven't been up there this week, have you? seen it this week? No, I haven't been up there. This is real close to where I live. <clears throat> in fact, that house you see is a couple of houses down from me. They have brought in a track hoe and have done the usual process of removing existing unsuitable soils and bringing in red dirt. So they've created a red dirt pad there now. Mm -hmm. They did that this week. I don't have the heart to go look at it now, Richard, I'm afraid. <laughs> I guess I need, I, I uh, over the years, constantly, you know, documented construction sites before and after it, and, but this is, this is the kind of thing that uh, can be done so it doesn't harm it very much, but any, any impact uh, on the changing the soil, that sort of thing, decreases the absorbent soil that protects downstream. And also it protects water quality. If it, water soaks in there, it goes slowly into the stream when it hits the bedrock level. But uh, well, I'm, I'm glad you had the heart to go look at it. That was some of the dirt they had dug up when they were putting in this sewer line and water line here. So, and that's just letting you know farmers markets about to start. That's for everybody in the city, regardless of your neighborhood. And what, what date is it? Uh, it's the first Saturday in April. The first Saturday in April, so that's coming up fast before you see this broadcast, maybe. Yep. <coughs> that's all we have. Thank you. Let us do that. Well, it definitely makes for a more interesting meeting than me up here looking at my notes and talking. <clears throat> um, any more neighborhood reports, updates? I uh, just got a short one. <coughs> yeah. uh, I had uh, proposed uh, uh, courting uh, the folks down at, uh, thank you, Nantucket. Uh, and uh, I <coughs> spoke uh, uh, a couple of weeks back with a young lady named Ashley Thomas, who's a site manager, and uh, told her briefly why I thought that it might be of interest to them to, to mm -hmm. find a representative from their POA. That's essentially what it is, and uh, 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 she was receptive. Uh, didn't know it's kind of out of the blue for her. So of course she's the site manager. She's had the first talk with the other honchos, and then tried to see if there was somebody that was a resident that was particularly interested in participating. I've offered to provide transportation for them since we're just down the street, and uh, I'll just continue to proceed that I haven't heard back from them yet. It's, you know, uh, <clears throat> it just occurred to me that someone picks up on this video and here's two or three really interesting focal areas of the city. Could they possibly see a link to the whole 
package of thumbnails. Whenever, whenever you showed a, an arsenal of thumbnails there, I there, can check. I is there a way that they could say, oh, I'm really interested in this. I'd like to know more. I'd like to browse through the photo kit. I can, I can, uh, I can find out, check with the government channel. Put it on an image <clears throat> to me, that's a uh, would be a, like a value added that would be an enhancement to anyone coming and seeing one of our programs mm -hmm. is to go ahead and do some more in-depth study. The people at Nantucket definitely are stakeholders in what takes place with the the Willow Heights Willow Bend mm -hmm. development. It's down the street mm -hmm. from that area. And. Uh, you know, to me, that energizes me and, and gives me <clears throat> a more optimistic feeling about how we can uh, kind of disseminate and interconnect with uh, having a lot of nice photos is a real good start to me. Um, what else? Have we finished our meeting for the night? Well, Julie, you I, haven't I, had much to say. Julie, we deserve to hear from you. Um, well, things seem to be pretty standard in Wilson Park neighborhood this time of year, especially on the sunny days. The park gets packed with people. And I live on Isla Street, which just recently pat, um, was added to the residential parking plan. Um, I live on the one segment that had that plan added to it. Um, we have a driveway for our cars, so it really didn't impact us a great deal, except when we would have visitors. We got our two, we actually could have gotten up to four parking passes for guests since we have two registered cars, but we only got two um, because we also have a pretty long driveway and we, we know that there are um, other residents on that strip that don't have any driveway. Um, just because of the time frame that their house was built, you didn't have driveways. Um, I know that the people on the street um, are about that have been impacted about half and half or happy half aren't. <laughs> but I have noticed that there there are empty parking spaces all the time. It has definitely helped because we have one of those little mini pseudo roundabouts right there at Van Deventer and Isla. Mm -hmm. And when there was parking, um, a lot of it was college students and we have the two sorority houses right behind us. So a lot of it was from them, but um, they would park really close and sometimes it would be hard to get around that roundabout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we haven't had many issues with that. Um, I do know that one of the families on Isla that has been impacted that doesn't have a driveway um, has elderly couple that live there, their kids and grandkids come to care for them. They, they've had some, some issues, um, but um, I think it was just with the limitations of the parking passes. Um, but I think for the most part, it's been pretty positive. I mean, I kind of like um, when there's a Razorback game that we don't have people trying to park on both sides of the street because it's not, it's even posted you can't park on one side of the street and people would still try to do that and it would get really um, difficult to get out of your driveway. Mm -hmm. um, well, this is the first I've heard about it since it was passed that mm -hmm. night. Uh, do they have meters in your pass? No, well, they, have, they have the numbered. Mm -hmm. Um, spaces and it's posted that residential um, you, know, you need a res residential parking permit for those spaces and um, the residents of course had to register just show that they had registered cars there and then they could get so many guest passes per registered car I think it was up to two per registered car um, so if you were a you know like my husband at Sounds weird. My <laughs> husband and myself, we each have our own car. We could have gotten up to six passes, um, even though we have a driveway, which I personally didn't see why people that had driveways needed that. that. But that was just my personal opinion, and I did not speak up at, 
the whole process, so. Game that's, day, that's why you need more. Yeah, I get, no, not game day. We could have used, luckily my wedding was actually before this went into effect because then it would have been a problem because <laughs> um, we had the, the wedding problem. at the house. You were part of the problem then, right? Yeah, well, but. I'm interested in now, this is a probably kind of a picture of what you're describing. Right, and Band Adventure is the... This thing in the middle stills the traffic. They're not going to drive over it, so they... Well, they did it. at one point because there was a tree in it, and somebody took the tree out. Oh, but, <laughs> but I'm interested, since we've got you here as a true sure. witness, how has that worked out? At that plus the parking are... are or significant changes that have taken place in lots of neighborhoods over mm -hmm. and around. The mini roundabout actually works because that is a north-south street that runs from Maple to Wilson Park. And they're um, right next to the Kappa Delta um, sorority house. It is a highly traveled area for college students. Um, and there was a lot of, and it goes downhill towards the park and it was, um, a cut through. It was a very one of those very quick. Somebody's trying to get around traffic. They would go speeding through there, and they didn't, except for whoever took out a tree one night in the middle of the night. So you say was that means traffic pattern altered then? Yes, yes, That's it traffic. did. You can't go speeding because <clears throat> that. I mean, the street really isn't wide enough for that little mini whatever it is. You have to go about, around it. What I'm curious about is the outfall, the result. Does that mean that people are just making other choices or are they just behaving nicer? Either or because Both. otherwise they would have been running into people's yards. I mean, with the exception, like I said, of the one person that ran over the tree and took it out. It was a big tree. So, my my it, conception is that the roundabout just serves to, to keep traffic flowing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, uh, it's, it's not going necessarily in, impact the amount of traffic going way, through there, except that it makes the flow more consistent so that uh, you don't have to sit, you don't have to stop, then pull forward and stop, then pull forward and stop. Mm -hmm. you, it's, it's a continuous motion. Well, that is the intention of a roundabout. That's why I say this is kind of a pseudo roundabout because the east-west street is Isla and there's stop signs mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. So it is not a constant it's, flow. It's a, it's a, a, it's a visual slower downer. obstacle it's made, that causes mm -hmm. you to divert yeah. and then consequently you slow down. So right. it's, it's, it serves more as a traffic calming rather than yeah. a traffic control. Well, the Lord knows in this town we need calmer drivers. That's for sure. sure, absolutely. What I'm really curious about is how do you view both of these factors? Okay, the, the control on parking and the divert, the, the sl stilling capacity of these. Is that uh, generally a plus in your mind? I think they have both. Um, served the purpose that they were intending to maybe not um the most aesthetically pleasing i i am pleased with both of them personally i think i know there are some neighborhood people that may not agree with me and maybe it may be the aesthetic of it or it may not have been the most efficient but they serve the purpose so they, they are meeting what they were supposed to do we do not have as isla street we don't have um college students and sorority students and um, visiting families packing Isla Street every day. Um, and for uh, the Van de, Vendor cut, Van de Vendor cut through, it is not a little speedway where you have to kind of take like your life in your hands when you're crossing it anymore. So fair to summarize it then that's a net gain? I think so. Good. Sometimes we don't see it at first when you, sure. watch, when you watch it play out, it turns out to be something desirable. That's sure. Good. That's good. Everybody's packing their backpacks. Looks like uh, we need to entertain travel. a motion to adjourn. I, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I want to. I'll make that motion to adjourn, but I wanted first to say, uh, I believe our meeting will be on Thursday. Is it twenty sixth of April? I don't have my calendar. Anyway, that's close. The, the final Thursday of the month, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, please, we'd like to invite other people to come and share with us uh, as we were sharing with one another tonight and hope uh, 
hope they have some nice things to say, not just bad things. But it's okay if they have bad things. We'll still it's okay. Them. We listen. <laughs> so Definitely interested in being that forum. I move to adjourn. Do we have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Julie, <laughs> almost get the same.